one, but there's another one that's, uh, I, I have friends who've gone to it. And Victory they're, Outreach? Victory Outreach, but there's still another yeah. one. There's another one. But I have friends who've been in the program and they're pillars of our church now. They told me that they needed somebody to get their attention. They were addicted to heroin and other drugs. And once they got into this you know, accountability program where they treated them, uh, they were able to get their lives together. Frankly, there are some, they don't care. They don't want to get help. They just want to party. I mean, who would not like to be on the beach hanging out with a tent? No rent. That's a good deal, right? Those folks, we just have to hold them accountable. Whatever the laws are, we have to hold them accountable. You know, uh, I, uh, as a kid, if I messed up, I was held accountable. Frankly, I was more afraid of my mother and my grandmother than I was the police officer because they held me accountable. They, they had Mr. Belt. <laughs> and we would be thrown in jail. They'd be thrown in jail now for Mr. Belt. I got to know Mr. Belt really well. And my mom said, Melvin, I'm only doing this because I love you. And I say, Mom, don't love me so much. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> but so all I'm saying is that we have to start holding people accountable. So I have a way of getting them off the streets. And then we, tr we have to give them what is called supportive services. They cannot make it on their own. We get $340 million a year from the county for supportive services. LA City got $1.2 billion to build the structures, but they're building them at outrageously ridiculous prices that you know Faith of the uh, Hope of the Valley. My brother Ken Kraft is being honored this uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, as a uh, humanitarian. And I was uh, honored about two years ago at Humanitarian of the Year for the San Fernando Valley by a group called the Valley Economic Alliance. But you know, there are ways, and I believe that the ones who are truly cured are the ones that are faith-based. That's what I've seen. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go to treatment, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit and, 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 and something else that's making you more accountable, you're gonna fall back into drug addicted behavior. So that's, that's my solution for that, is usher them off the street, give them a choice. If they're unwilling to take it, then they have to suffer the consequences. Those, you know, those are just adult things that people have to do. Sounds kind of harsh, but that's, that's how I see it. Anyone else? Yes. I live in what is your name? I'm Shirley. Hi, Shirley. I live in Chatsworth, mm -hmm. and I have seen the homeless just exploded mm -hmm. on the streets. Mm -hmm. Like the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and just driving here, all along, you know, the industrial area, mm -hmm. it's just full of the the trailers mm -hmm. and the tents. And mm -hmm. is is there um, any plans to like make it illegal to be in the streets, and they have to go somewhere else? Or well, it's already there are already laws that says you cannot, you know, restrict the pathway on sidewalks. It's already been in place been in place for a long time. Our, you know, there is a court case uh, that took place a couple years ago and the judge, uh, Judge Carter, ruled that if the city of LA does not have 60% of the bed capacity for those who are homeless, you cannot get them off the street. Uh, one of my opponents who's running for mayor, he's a city attorney, and he failed on that case. You know, that there was a ruling against us so it makes it hard for the police officers to, to get them off the streets until you build enough housing. I believe we can build these shelters faster. You know, now they're taking three years to build something. That's crazy. So we have to build them faster and at a lower cost. Uh, on the issue of the abandoned or really beat up RVs, I think it's an eyesore. So my plan is to have industrial areas and we'll tell the folks who are living in those vehicles you have to live in this in, in this park. You have to pay a certain amount because it requires money to maintain it, the security, the sanitation, and the like. Uh, if you don't do that, your vehicle is going to get inbounded. Your RV is going to because it's an eyesore, mm -hmm. and and, it, and it's it's just you know a sanitary mess and it's unhealthy. So my belief is that we have to just you know I'm just a common sense person, you know, and these are just common sense solutions, but. There's billions and billions of dollars that have been going to homelessness, and it's just getting it's exploding. It's getting worse because no one's being held accountable. The politicians are not being held accountable. The drug addicts are not being held accountable. The mentally ill, they don't know about accountability because they're out of it. So we have to change the way things are being done. Yes, Miriam. Uh, so have you read the same articles I have that 
these billions of dollars that are going to homeless mm -hmm. are going, I mean, people are making a ton of money and they, there's no even plan to get rid of the homeless because of these 300 some thousand dollar, you know, administrative jobs for people that are, I mean, in other words, mm -hmm. there's a tremendous amount of money being made off the homeless that's mm -hmm. not going to the homeless. It's so more money isn't the isn't the I, need. I agree with you. It's I, good administration. And how I, do we get that? That's that's the bottom line. You know, homelessness has become an industry. You know, it, it, you know, you see somebody homeless and you, you really feel bad for them, and then until they break into your car or hit you upside the head, then you're mad at them, and then you have to forgive them, right? <laughs> but uh, so it's become an industry where people have set up shop, and it's not like they're trying to solve the problem. They're just trying to, you know, put a band aid on it, and they keep going back to the federal government, the state government, the local government. They go to us, the taxpayers, they ask us to pay money for it, and so you're right. You know, this is what's happening all over. Uh, and we just have to put someone in place. The mayor has the ability to appoint and hire and fire. And I'm, you know, I've been in business for 40 plus years. And uh, I don't like to fire people, but I have had to. And so when people are not performing, here's what I do. I say, look, here, here are the standards. So it's really clear. Here are the metrics. This is how we're going to measure you. And uh, we're going to give you a timeline. I'm going to check back in with you at a certain period. And if you're not doing it, you got to go. It's just that simple. I mean, it's hard, but it's what people do in business all the time. In government, they just they keep hiring people, keeping on the payroll. Oh, yeah. It's not right. We're getting ripped off. We're, we're taxpayers. We're getting ripped off. And so I just know that we, we can change this culture. But when you have career politicians, who have been doing the same thing over and over again. You shouldn't expect anything different. They make all these promises. These folks have raised millions of dollars. I haven't. The only thing that's stopping me from getting my message out is getting more money. If people would just invest in our campaign, we will get our message out. We have 60 days left. We'll win this race. You know, I, I read about Hezekiah. I read about Jehoshaphat. These are battles that they were like, oh, there's no way. There's the vast armies all around you. And that's what's happening here. The vast armies of people who are politicians all around me. And then there's a billionaire who's spending lots of money because he's tired of playing on this ship. He's got a yacht in the in marina that's worth $100 million. This is just a toy for him being the mayor of L.A. City. Uh, that's not me. You know, I, uh, I just I have a passion, and I have a plan, and I have God on my side. So uh, that's going to be the ingredient that separates us. And it's already separating us. It's, that's why, you know, when they say the media says, this guy, Bill Wilson's kind of different. You know, well, what, what, what? they try to put me in a box, but it's hard to put me in a box. A couple weeks ago, I had, um, Marcel was with me. We had a, a press event calling for the federal government and the state government to suspend the dollar and five cents sales tax or gas tax. You know how hard it is to fill your tank up now? It's expensive. <laughs> so the governor's fooling around, so, oh, we'll give him a rebate, you know, uh, to everybody. Well, he just wants to buy votes. You suspend this gas tax for one year. All the money that the gas tax is going to, there's $45 billion in the, fe in the state coffers that they can use to do whatever they were going to do. But no, he's trying to buy votes. And so I'm the only one that stood up and said, you know what, this is common sense. Just lower, lower the taxes. Make it easier for people to be able to afford to live. I have a lot of friends who are seniors. And thank God I'm still earning money. But I have a lot of friends who are seniors who are on fixed income. And so when you add a gas bill uh, to where a gas tax is, is, is stopping folks from being able to live and go visit their friends and their relatives, this is not right. And we just have to call it out. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, about a month ago, two months ago, I had an event calling for DWP and all the corruption. I don't know if you've been paying attention to DWP. Anybody have a DWP bill? Mm -hmm. Has it been going up? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's obscene. Mm -hmm. It's obscene. It's doubling. And then they want to, if you're a gardener, forget it. They, they want you, all your plants to go dry, you know, because they don't want you to use any water anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but DWP has the city attorney who's running for mayor had two of his picks the chief litigator 
and a contract attorney all plead guilty. The DWP general manager pleaded guilty to corruption. This just happened a few months ago. And then they have the nerve to give me a, a, a rate increase at my DWP and tell me my tier number is going up or whatever the ridiculous thing is they say. This is, this is not right. And guess, who, guess who, who called this out? Me. Did any of the other politicians? No, because they're all a part of this, this plan. So what I'm saying to you is I'm, I, it's, a, it's a fight. But you know I, I know that uh, I have a God that has won a lot of battles. Mm -hmm. And you know, he loves me just like he loves you. Mm -hmm. He knows that I'm, my heart's in the right 